my lovely students a very hearty welcome to this mind blowing platform physics wala my name is nupur sharma and today we are going to do footprints without feet okay the name of your book is also footprints without feet and so is the name of your chapter now before starting this chapter let's discuss about scientists now scientists and their scientific experiments how helpful they can be for the society you know very helpful because of science we have achieved a lot of things but you know that anything can be a boon and a bane for the society science has a lot of advantages but it also can have a lot of disadvantages similarly the scientific experiments which can prove to be you know very helpful for the society they can also be a bane for the society in this chapter we are going to meet a scientist whose scientific experiment became a nuisance for the society okay now let's meet the scientist and let's move further okay today first of all we are going to have an overview then line by line explanation and in the end we are going to discuss the key points of this chapter now the interesting story by herbert george wells is about a scientist named griffin and his rare formula of invisibility does he use this formula or misuse it now invisibility you know i don't think so that any person hasn't ever thought of going invisible you know how helpful would it be if we become invisible okay we do any mischief okay we have done something wrong and then you know we become invisible we are not visible to the human eye how helpful that can be but you know this can also be you know misused by a wrong person in this chapter also we are going to read about a scientist whose name is griffin okay this scientist is very shrewd person he is a very you know it he is a negative character he is a gray character in this story and what he does does he misuse this formula or does he use this formula that we are going to learn through this story okay first of all you are going to remember the name of the writer and that is herbert george wells okay as they gazed a remarkable sight met their eyes a fresh footmark appeared from nowhere as they gazed here they are talking about two boys when they gazed gazed actually mean, meant stared when they looked intently when they looked intently they saw a remarkable sight remarkable sight means the one that you cannot forget easily they saw a remarkable sight a fresh footmark appeared from nowhere okay a fresh footmark footmark could be seen and without okay there was no person but there was a footmark further footprints followed one after another descending the steps and progressing down the street the boys followed fascinated until the muddy impressions became fainter and fainter at last disappeared altogether further footprints followed it means that further footprints were forming on the you know road on the mud as we can see one after another descending the steps descending the steps means that they were they were leaving the trail behind and they were progressing the boys were following fascinated they were fascinated okay obviously they were actually quite surprised they were surprised to look as those at those footprints that how did they appear out of nowhere and the muddy impressions became started you know becoming fainter and fainter it started becoming fainter and fainter because the person was actually leaving the street the explanation of the mystery was really simple enough the bewildered boys had followed the scientists who had just discovered how to make the human body transparent the explanation of mystery was very simple was very simple and it was that scientists had made a startling discovery that how to make the human body transparent he had learned the formula which can actually make a person invisible now the bewildered boys means the shocked the boys were very shocked to see a person without uh, i mean the footprints without actually feet 
Griffin, the scientist, had carried out experiment after experiment to prove that the human body could become invisible. Finally, he swallowed certain rare drugs and his body became as transparent as a sheet of glass, though it also remained as solid as glass. Now, if we look, Griffin, the scientist, he had done experiment after experiment. It means that he was actually trying to get this formula and he did he put a lot of efforts and after a lot of efforts he was actually successful in making himself invisible okay and he devised uh, a method he you know um, was able to produce a certain drugs now he swallowed them he swallowed them it means that he gulped those drugs and he was able to make himself invisible he was and visible as invisible as a sheet of glass okay uh, like if you see a sheet of glass and you can see you know uh, <laughs> i mean if you see a sheet of glass uh, outside you can actually sometimes not even recognize that it's a sheet of glass it's so invisible now he was as invisible as that but he was also solid okay when you touch the glass then only you can feel that it is actually a glass you may have seen a lot of videos lot of funny videos uh, on youtube where you have seen that a person is trying to actually cross uh, a <coughs> doorway and he you know his face actually you know he bumps into a glass he bumps into a glass door and then he realizes okay it was a glass door and i thought it's invisible and i uh, the doorway was clear so he was actually also looking like that only but he was solid brilliant scientists thought he was griffin was rather a lawless person brilliant scientists though he was griffin was rather a lawless person his landlord disliked him and tried to eject him now brilliant scientists he was a brilliant scientist he was very intelligent but he was a lawless person lawless person is a person who doesn't actually follow rules he did not follow any rules his landlord he used to dislike him and he wanted to you know actually throw him out eject actually means throw him out he wanted to throw him out he wanted to you know discard him in revenge griffin set fire to the house to get away without being seen he had to remove his clothes thus it was that he became a homeless wanderer without clothes without money and quite invisible until he happened to step in some mud and left footprints as he walked now they're explaining what he did that he was so mischievous he was you know in spite he was so spiteful that he set his house on fire he set his own house where he used to live his landlord's house he put it on fire and after that because obviously he didn't want to you know uh, get caught by the police he removed all his clothes when he removed all his clothes he was completely invisible it was then when he became a homeless wanderer he was homeless wanderer he was a wanderer on the streets he used to you know he had no place to go he had no house he had no money and he was actually very invisible but obviously when he stepped on mud his footprints could be, his footprints could be seen that is why the name of the chapter is footprints without feet because the feet could not be seen but the footprints were there he escaped easily enough from the boys who followed his footprints in london but his adventure adventures were by no means over he had chosen a bad time of the year to wander about london without clothes it was midwinter the air was bitterly cold and he could not do without clothes instead of walking about the streets he decided to slip into a big london store for warmth now he escaped easily enough from the boys he could escape easily because obviously he cannot be seen he could not be seen so it was easy for him to you know escape from the boys but his adventures were no means over he had decided that he has to carry on more adventures he you know carried out to be even more mischievous what he did he had chosen a bad time of the year he had chosen a bad time uh, to be clothless because he was in london and london was very cold at that time it was winter season and he could not do without clothes it was mid winter he was in mid winter the air was bitterly cold it was bitterly cold bitterly cold means that the air was harshly cold 
and he could not do without clothes. Instead of walking about the streets, he decided to slip into a big London store for warmth. Now, what he decided, he decided that he cannot wander on the streets, he cannot, you know, walk leisurely on the streets without the clothes. So, he decided that I should go to a London store and I should hide there, I should, you know, look for warmth. So, he decided to go there and obviously, nobody could see him. So, it was very simple for him to go there. Now, closing time arrived and as soon as the doors were shut, Griffin was able to give himself the pleasure of clothing and feeding himself without a regard of expense. He broke open boxes and wrappers and fitted himself out with warm clothes. Closing time arrived as the store was closed. Now, he could do anything. He was actually very free. What he did that he, you know, gave him the pleasure of clothing. He clothed himself and he also fed himself and he did not have to care about the expenses. He did not have to care about paying the money. Okay, expenses means paying money because obviously he was invisible and there was nobody uh, to, you know, charge money from him. He broke open boxes, he broke open the wrappers and he fitted himself to in very warm clothes. He wore a lot of clothes because obviously it was midwinter and he had to cover himself. Soon with shoes and overcoat and a wide brimmed hat, he had become a fully dressed and visible person. He was visible because he was wearing clothes. There was a solid body. The solid body, it did not, be, it became transparent, but it was still there. That is why when he wore the clothes, he was visible enough. In the kitchen of the restaurant, he found cold meat and coffee and he followed up the meal with sweets and wine taken from the grocery store. Finally, he settled down to sleep on a pile of quilts. Now, obviously, he what he did that he was very hungry. So, he found some cold meat and he ordered, uh, ate the cold meat and it was followed by wine, coffee and whatnot. Uh, he could do anything. He was free and no, there was nobody to look at him. So, he did all these things and finally, he slept on a few quilts. Quilts means blankets, okay, on a pile of quilts, on a, you know, blankets, on a lot of blankets, he made himself asleep. If only Griffin had managed to wake up in good time, all might have been well. As it was, he did not wake up until the assistants were already arriving next morning. When he saw a couple of them approaching, he panicked and began to run. Now, Griffin made a mistake. Griffin, you know, he kept on sleeping a uh, whole night. He did not, you know, wake up on time. He did not wake up on the time of opening of the uh, London store. The store was open, the assistants were already there and they saw him. They saw him that a person, a person without a face and without hands, just, you know, in a pile of clothes, he was lying down there and he panicked. He panicked when he saw them approaching, the assistants, you know, saw him and they tried to catch him. He began to run. They naturally gave chase. In the end, he was able to escape only by quickly taking off his newly found clothes. So once more, he found himself invisible, but naked in the chilly January air. Now, he had to escape. You know, he had to save himself from the assistance. So what he did, it was very simple. He removed all his clothes. He had no other, you know, option. He had to remove all his clothes, all his new found clothes. The clothes were absolutely new. He had actually unpacked the clothes just last, uh, you know, uh, last night. And he just fitted himself into it. But he had to throw all the clothes because he did not want to get, uh, you know, get caught by the assistants. So once more, he was outside and it was chilly winter and it was very difficult for him to survive in this cold winter. He was naked. Naked means that he was not covered. He was bare. Okay. He was actually bare. This time he decided to try the stock of a theatrical company in the hope of finding not only clothes but also something that would hide the empty space above his shoulders. Shivering with cold, he hurried to Drury Lane, in the center of the theatre world. Now, as I told you that he is a very shrewd person, he is also a very brilliant person. So, he thought of an idea. 
he thought that i should go to the theatrical companies and theatrical companies they have a lot of you know extra clothing they have a lot of uh, you know accessories wherein you know i can uh, you know cover myself he had to you know he was uh, when he wore clothes he was visible but his hands were not visible he could wear gloves but he had to you know show you know he had to do something from above the shoulder his neck and about his face and everything so what he did he went to a theatrical company company to find something to cover the space above his shoulders he was shivering with cold because obviously there was so much cold it was mid winter and you know he was not feeling so well he went to the drury lane the center of the theater world this was the time you're talking about that time when the theaters were very popular here when i'm talking about the theater i'm not talking about the cinema halls i am actually talking about the theaters where plays used to be conducted okay plays were there earlier when people had to get themselves entertained they used to see the plays there were no movies and everything uh, the plays were very popular uh, those times and you know in plays people were every you know different kind of things they uh, even become invisible you know, during the shows and they do a lot of things even you know Uh, a lot of magic, uh, you know, magical shows also take place. So he knew that he would find find something to cover something above his shoulders. He soon found a suitable shop. He made his way invisible upstairs and came out a little later wearing bandages around his forehead, dark glasses, false nose, big bushy side whiskers, and a large hat. To escape without being seen, he callously attacked the shopkeeper from behind. After which he robbed him of all the money he could find. He soon found a suitable shop. Okay, he found a suitable shop where he could find everything. He whatever he needed, he made his way. He went invisible. Nobody could see him invisible. He went upstairs. What he did? He wore bandages around his forehead. How he covered his forehead? He wore bandages around it. He wore dark glasses, dark glasses, so that nobody could see his empty eyes because his eyes was not were not visible. He wore a false nose and big bushy side whiskers, white side whiskers. side whiskers are these okay he also wore side whiskers and he wore a large hat to escape without seeing he callously attacked the shopkeeper he also attacked the shopkeeper and from behind and obviously he also you know robbed some money from him he also robbed some money from him because he also needed money to survive now that he was visible he was not invisible anymore he was visible so he had to take care of himself he needed money in order to survive so he also you know robbed money from the manager from the you know uh, store owner eager to get away from the crowded london he took a train to the village of iping where he booked two rooms at the local inn eager to get away from the crowded london now as i told you that london was very crowded london was very crowded and he could be easily caught by the police or by any the any the person so he found a place he found a place in the village of iping he took a train and he went to village of iping where he booked rooms at the local inn here inn means hotel okay he found uh you know um rooms in a local inn the arrival of a stranger at an inn in winter was in any case an unusual event a strange a stranger of such uncommon appearance set all tongues wagging mrs hall the landlord's wife made every effort to be friendly but griffin had no desire to talk and told her my reason for coming to iping is a desire for solitude i do not wish to be disturbed in my work besides an accident has affected my face it was the arrival of a stranger obviously we are talking here about a small country this country side we are talking about iping and iping is a very small place there you know anything you know uh, the rumors you know they uh, easily get you know uh, transferred from one place to another now when the stranger came he was so you know different in looking and he had booked a room in winters you know in mid winters nobody used to come in the village in the winters so everybody was quite surprised and all the tongues were wagging all the tongues were wagging 
that what kind of a person he is you know they were quite surprised they were quite in awe that what kind of a stranger he is mrs hall the landlord's wife here we also meet mrs hall mrs hall uh, you know he wanted she wanted to be friendly with the person you know obviously when you go to a uh, any hotel or something the owners they try to you know find out answers from you that who are you where you have come from or something like that she you know started to uh, she was trying to break ice she wanted to start a conversation with the person but he was in no mood he was in no mood and he said that my reason to coming to iping is that i want solitude i want to be alone i want to be alone in iping i do not want to be disturbed he portrayed that as if he is a scientist he wanted solitude he wanted to do some experiments and something and besides he also told that uh, i you know did some experiment and that experiment has you know affected my face that is why i am wearing so many bandages around my face he gave even he tried to explain that why he was you know looking so different satisfied that her guest was an eccentric scientist and in view of the fact that he had paid her in advance mrs hall was prepared to excuse his strange habits and irritable temper satisfied now mrs hall was satisfied because he had paid in advance what do what does uh, an owner want owner of an inn want she wanted that okay he had paid in advance what more do i have to care from him he was an eccentric scientist eccentric scientist means he was a strange kind of scientist she made up her mind okay she is a strange scientist and in view of the fact that he had paid in advance mrs uh, hall thought that okay i will excuse him for all his bad manners i will excuse that he has so many you know he has such strange habits and he has an irritable temper irritable temper means that he could easily lose his temper easily lose his temper but the stolen money did not last long and presently griffin had to admit that he had no more ready cash he pretended however that he was expecting a check to arrive at any moment the money that griffin had robbed from that store owner it did not last long it was finished that is why he had to tell mrs hall that i'm expecting a check and a check would arrive any time and i would pay you at that time i do not have any money right now he had no one either you know option rather to lie to you know mrs hall that i am expecting a check from someone shortly afterwards a afterwards a curious episode occurred very early in the morning a clergyman and his wife were awakened by noises in the study creeping downstairs they heard the chink of money being taken from the clergyman's desk without making any excuse and with a poker grass firmly in his hand the clergyman flung open the door and he said surrender now shortly afterwards a curious episode occurred a curious episode occurred a strange incident occurred A strange incident occurred very early in the morning a clergyman and his wife were awakened by noises in the study there were some noises in the study and a clergyman and his wife woke up from their sleep creeping downstairs they heard the chink of money being taken from the clergyman's desk without making any noise and with a poker grass firmly in his hand the clergyman flung open the door and said surrender now the clergyman he was creeping downstairs creeping means you know walking without making any noise you know walking without any noise he did not make any noise and he was creeping along with his wife downstairs and they heard the chink of money the chink of money here means the sharp noise of money they heard a sharp noise of money which was being you know taken from clergyman's desk now they you know did not try to make any noise they you know wanted to try you uh, know uh, catch um, they wanted to catch a thief so in order to catch a thief they were you know trying to shush they did not make any noise and they suddenly they flung open the door they flung the door means that they you know open the door with a quite a force flung open the door means open with a lot of force a big force a big force and they said surrender he took a poker poker here means a metal rod 
there was also a metal rod in the hand of the clergyman uh, then to his amazement he realized that the room appeared to be empty he and his wife looked under the desk and being and behind the curtains and even up the chimney there wasn't a sign of anybody now as we know that uh, an invisible person has come to you know uh, you know rob their house so obviously he was not visible they searched everywhere they were quite amazed they were quite surprised that they could not see anybody they tried to find him they find you know they try to uh, you know find the thief behind the curtains behind you know under the desk and in the chimney but they could not see anyone we know because he was a uh, an invisible person yet the desk had been opened they saw that the desk had been opened and the money had been you know taken out the housekeeping money was missing from there extraordinary affair the clergyman kept saying for the rest of the day but it was not as extraordinary as the behavior of mrs hall's furniture a little later that morning now there was one more surprise you know waiting to happen a more extraordinary person was about extraordinary thing was about to happen now when this thing happened to the clergyman he was shouting an extraordinary affair an extraordinary affair you know this is not an ordinary affair it's quite you know a strange thing happened happened in his house so he you know kept on shouting this thing but you know mrs hall's furniture was not behaving normally and now let's find out how the landlord and his wife were up very early and were surprised to see the scientist's door wide open usually it was shut and locked and he was furious if anyone entered his room the opportunity seemed too good to be missed landlord and his wife were up very early and they saw that the room of the stranger was left open it was quite a good opportunity for them because this stranger he used to lock his house he all uh, lock his room now they were very curious to find you know this kind of person he had raised a lot of curiosities in the people in the minds of people people wanted to know that what kind of person is living here he looks so strange he behaves so strangely so it looked like an opportunity that they did not want to miss and they wanted to enter his room earlier when anybody entered the room of that person he was very furious he became very angry he became very angry if anybody you know tried to come in his room now this was a golden opportunity that they did not want to miss they peeped around the door saw nobody and decided to investigate the bed clothes were cold showing that the scientists must have been up for some time and stranger to still the clothes and bandages that he always wore were lying about the room they peeped you know they peeped they peeped means that they looked like this they looked in the room they tried to peep in his room and they tried to investigate it they wanted to you know further investigate his room they wanted to find out you know they wanted to find out that what you know strange things could be find found in his room they wanted to find out more about him but what did they see they saw that the uh, bed was cold the bed was cold it means that he had left his uh you know bed uh, early in the morning and strangely enough his clothes and his bandages that he always used to carry were also lying in the corner of the bed all of a sudden mrs hall heard a sniff close to her ear a moment later the hat on the bed post leapt up and dashed itself into her face then the bedroom chair became alive springing into the air it charged straight at her legs foremost all of a sudden mrs hall heard a sniff sniff means a little a small breath a sniff means a small breath she could feel a small breath in her ears moment later a bed you know a hat you know leapt into her leapt towards her leapt means it you know flew towards her it flew towards her it jumped actually it jumped towards her jumped at flung it was jumped at flung towards her the basically they could see that the hat was flying towards her towards her face the bedroom chair became alive it became alive means because obviously we know that the invisible person is actually picking up the chair and he is trying to flung the chair at mrs hall's face but as he was not visible only the chair was visible and the chair was actually trying to attack mrs hall and his the uh, legs of the chair were foremost as you can see in the 
image. As she and her husband turned away in terror, the extraordinary chair pushed them both out of the room and then appeared to slam and lock the door after them. She and her husband, they were quite in terror. You know, they were quite in fear. They were, you know, so fearful because this kind of thing were hap things were happening. An inanimate object had just tried to attack Mrs. Hall. You know, they were quite feared. They were very frightened. And they, you know, what they did, they, you know, uh, tried to back themselves up. And then the chair was pushing them. The chair, you know, pushed them outside of the room. The, you know, it was looking like that the chair wanted them to go out of the room and then it flung open the door the door was you know slammed slam means it was closed forcefully the door was closed forcefully and it was locked Mrs. Hall almost fell down the stairs in hysterics. She was convinced that the room was haunted by spirits and that the stranger had somehow caused these to enter into her furniture. Mrs. Hall fell down in hysterics. Hysterics means she was in a state of extreme shock. She was in extreme shock. She was so much frightened. She was convinced that the room was haunted. Room was haunted means that there is a ghost or something, you know, there was a ghost or a spirit inside her room. And it was, you know, quite strange. She thought that the stranger had something to do with it. She thought that the spirit now has entered into her furniture. My poor mother used to sit in that chair. She moaned to think it should rise up against me now. Now, Mrs. Hall was totally, you know, she was so distraught about this idea that, you know, she was thinking that, you know, this poor chair, this my, my poor mother, she used to chit, sit on that chair and now that chair has, you know, turned up against me. A spirit has entered into that chair and it is trying to attack me. She could not actually believe her eyes. Obviously, if a person looks like this, you know, uh, such kind of incident happens with especially a lady like Mrs. Hall. She was, you know, quite frightened after it. The feeling among the neighbors was that the trouble was caused by witchcraft. But witchcraft or not, when news of the burglary at the clergyman's home became known, the strange scientist was strongly suspected of having a hand in it. The feeling among the neighbors, obviously, the news was spread like wildfire, you know, in villages and everything where the, you know, the houses are very, uh, you know, uh, less uh, in these places, it spreads like wildfire and the people thought that it had something to do with witchcraft. Witchcraft, you know, now what is it's, you know, voodoo and something, it's, it has something to do with black magic. They thought that some kind of black magic is going on. Now she thought that witchcraft or not, something is happening, you know, something is happening. And then the news of burglary, burglary went out. The burglary, the theft Burglary means the theft that happened at clergyman's house, it was spread in the whole village and everybody thought that he is a strong suspect. This stranger has something to do with it because of his strange looks, because of his strange habits and everything that is happening inside his room. Everybody thought that yes, he is a strong suspect and he has something to do with it. Suspicion grew even stronger when he suddenly produced some ready cash though he had admitted not long before that he had no money. Now suspicion grew stronger because what he did, he had, you know, stolen the money from clergyman's house and he produced the money in front of Mrs. Hall. He gave the money to Mrs. Hall and he said that, okay, I had some money due with you. Now you take this money. Now, obviously, everybody, he was in uh, great suspicion. The village constable was secretly sent for. Instead of waiting for the constable, Mrs. Hall went to the scientist who had somehow mysteriously appeared from his empty bedroom. The village constable. Now, a village constable was called in, you know, in secrecy. You know, nobody told that we are going to call the village constable. Now, Mrs. Hall, she did not wait for the constable to come. She was so much excited to know everything that what is happening inside my, you know, inn. She went straight to uh, the stranger to confront him. Okay, she thought that somehow, okay, and obvious, uh, and one thing more, he had somehow mysteriously, mysteriously, he had strangely appeared from the empty room. Earlier, when Mr. Hall and Mrs. Hall were pushed out of the room, the room was locked. The room was locked and there was nobody inside the room. 
they were in great suspicion that how he entered the empty bedroom how he appeared out of the empty bedroom and how he actually went into a locked room i want to know what you have been doing to my chair upstairs she demanded and i want to know how it is you came out of an empty room and how you entered a locked room now she had a lot of questions in her mind she wanted to know that how what did you do to my chair how the spirit entered my chair how my chair became alive and how did you enter a locked room and the room was empty how did you come out of an empty room she wanted the answers of so many questions the scientist was always quick tempered now he became furious you don't understand who or what i am he shouted very well i'll show you now obviously whenever a person is angry he is bound to make some mistakes scientist was always quick tempered he was quick tempered he was always easily a person who easily lost his temper he easily lost his temper and this time what he did he actually tried to threaten her he told you don't understand who i am you do not know what uh, who i am let me show you i'll show you suddenly he threw off bandages whiskers spectacles and even nose it took him only a minute to do this the horrified people in the bar found themselves staring at a headless man what he did he you know removed every piece of clothing that he used to wear and what appeared earlier it up he appeared to be a faceless man because he, he just removed everything that he was wearing above his shoulders and everybody was staring at him mr jaffer's the constable now arrived and was quite surprised to find that he had to arrest a man without a head but jaffer's was not easily prevented from doing his duty if a magistrate's warrant ordered a person's arrest then that person had to be arrested with or without his head now the honorable mr jaffer's appeared mr jaffer's he was obviously he was also quite surprised to see a headless person he saw that okay i have to arrest a person who does not have a head i have to produce him before the magistrate but now because he was very duty bound mr jaffer's was quite duty bound so he had to produce the person whether he has a head or not it means you know uh, it's quite kind of a sarcastic you know a remark that he had to produce the person and although how strong, you know strange he looked he had to you know arrest him there followed a remarkable scene as a policeman tried to get hold of a man who was becoming more and more invisible as he threw off one garment after another finally a shirt flew into the air and the constable found himself struggling with someone he could not see at all some people tried to help him but found themselves hit by blows that seemed to come from nowhere now therefore followed a remarkable scene there was a remarkable scene as you could see in movies you must have seen a lot of movies where the person becomes invisible now mr jaffers he was you know constantly struggling with the person and the person was becoming invisible by he was removing one gar garment after another because it was very simple it was very easy for the invisible man for the stranger to become invisible he just had to remove his all clothings and finally you know put off his shirt and now he was invisible now mr jaffers he had to put even more efforts because the person he was trying to catch to he was completely invisible the people who tried to hit me hit him they were also getting constant blows as you have seen in mr india or something if you have watched that movie you must have have seen there that how uh, the people were struggling with mr india and they were getting a slap or maybe a punch from anywhere and the stranger was you know he was able to actually you know deal with a lot of people in the end jaffers was knocked unconscious as he made a last attempt to hold on to the unseen scientist there were nervous excited cries of hold him but this was easier said than done griffin had shaken himself free and no one knew where to lay hands on him in the end what happens jaffers was knocked down he was knocked unconscious he was punched knocked unconscious means he was punched and he became unconscious he had no senses he was trying to make a last attempt to catch the person but he was not successful it was very simple it was very simple for the stranger man uh, to you know uh, vanish to become invisible 
he just you know went from there and nobody knew that where to catch him nobody knew where to lay hands how to catch him and how not to catch him and this scientist had actually proved that a scientific discovery can go very wrong if it you know goes in wrong hands and griffin was not a correct person he was a very wrong person and that scientific uh, you know experiment proved to be a nuisance for the society as i told you now in the end key points footprints without feet is a story about an eccentric scientist and an eccentric uh, a strange scientist here we are dealing with a strange scientist it has been taken from the novel of h g wells the invisible man it has been written by you know it has been taken from the invisible man it's a novel which is you know published by h g wells once two boys were surprised to see the fresh muddy imprints of the bare feet without any trace of any one uh um, you know in the starting of the chapter we saw a two, we saw two boys and they were seeing you know muddy imprints and they saw that the muddy imprints were you know vanishing they were you know getting fainter and fainter actually they were following a scientist called griffin who had discovered a rare drug that when eaten makes a person invisible now as we could see that griffin he were they were following griffin a scientist who had done a lot of experiments even and he was able to make the human body transparent and he himself consumed those drugs and he made himself invisible he set fire griffin was a brilliant scientist but he was a lawless person now along with being a brilliant person he was very intelligent but he was also a lawless person he set fire to the house of his landlord and ran away after becoming invisible as we know that his landlord didn't like him he wanted to eject him he wanted to throw him out so out of spite he attacked his landlord's house he set it on fire and he ran away from there to protect himself from cold of london he slipped into a store there he enjoyed the food comforts and clothing next morning he escaped by taking off his clothes from the grip of the workers now he had chosen a wrong time to you know go without clothes when he went outside he saw that okay he was feeling a lot of cold because the wind was very harsh so he entered a london store he dressed himself he fed himself he had no care about the expenses he had no money but he didn't even need to care about it because obviously he was invisible and there was nobody to charge money from him but next morning a few people saw him and he you know uh, they chased him but he went out and he removed again removed his clothes then he entered a theatrical house where he changed you know uh, uh, where he bought uh, bought no, no actually not brought but he you know stole a lot of um, instruments a lot of accessories a lot of costumes a nose and false nose and, and um, everything and whiskers and bandage and he also hit the shopkeeper and he robbed some money from him then he rented a house in iping uh, and in an uh, iping which was you know taken care by mr and mrs hall his strange looks and activities invited people's curiosity and attention once he stole money from the house of the clergyman his strange looks he was so strange looking so everybody you know uh, was looking curiously at him everybody was curious to know that what kind of a person he is then he stole money from the clergyman his landlady and her husband found his room open they peeked inside finding the room empty they went on only to be hit and chased by a chair now as we know that mr and mrs hall they woke up early one morning and they found that the room was quite empty they entered the room they saw that it's a golden opportunity let's find out that what kind of a person he is they were actually trying to dig up some you know clues about him but they were only hit and they were you know thrown out of the house they panicked and ran out griffin was now only highly suspected suspected village constable jaffers was called as he was quite suspected when the rumor when the news not actually rumor when the news of the burglary at clergyman's house you know spread he was the main suspect jaffers you know tried to catch him but he could not catch him because obviously he was not seen in the end jaffers was knocked unconscious by the scientists and griffin ran away invisibly he was invisible so it was very simple for griffin to run away and he was successful he was successful in doing what he wanted to do he was successful in creating nuisance for the society such kind of people are actually nuisance such kind of people are actually a bane for the society and it i should be banned these kind of experiment should not be done and even if they are done it should be you know done in proper you know um, 
uh, inspection should be done on, on such kind of people. So, okay, I hope that you understood this chapter. Now, we'll meet in the next class. Till then, bye-bye. Take care.